Hey guys, welcome back to Illness Scripts Pincast. Today we are going to talk about myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia is an autoimmune, antibody-mediated disorder whereby the acetylcholine receptor located on the postsynaptic neurons of muscle end plates are disrupted or destroyed. When thinking about the ideal patient for myasthenia gravis, one must consider a bimodal distribution. The patient is likely to be younger, a 20 to 40 year old woman, or an older 60 to 80 year old man. The major presenting feature of myasthenia gravis will be some form of muscle weakness that is fatigable. In other words, it worsens with time and or prolonged use of the muscle in question. Keep in mind some of the most rapidly and continuously acting muscles in the body are actually located within the eye. Thus, ocular manifestations are quite common with myasthenia gravis. In fact, on board exams, the question stem will almost never describe a patient without ocular symptoms, as this differs so much from the classical presentation. These manifestations will include ptosis and or diplopia. Other muscle groups that may be involved, however, include the bulbar and proximal limb muscles. The most dreaded muscle group involved in myasthenia is the respiratory muscles, as this can lead to respiratory failure and death. Exam findings in myasthenia are quite interesting. In patients with ptosis, you can actually worsen the ptosis by supporting the eyelid on the contralateral side, the so-called curtain sign. Again, fatigability is key. Having patients hold an upward gaze will often precipitate or worsen symptoms. Applying an ice pack to the eye or allowing the patient to have the eye remain closed for 20 minutes will produce a marked improvement in symptoms which is quite characteristic and often partially diagnostic for myasthenia gravis. Always remember to carefully examine your patient for signs of impending respiratory failure. The boards will often give you an exciting or challenging myasthenia case, but then simply want you to answer that the next best step would be to secure the airway and intubate the patient. It would be poor form to perform an ice pack test on a decompensating patient. A test that can be considered an exam is the Tensilon or Edrophonium test. Edrophonium is a short-acting acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, which will flood the synapse with acetylcholine, hoping to transiently overcome the inhibition present in myasthenia. Patients will often have a significant improvement in symptoms. Please keep in mind, however, that this is a marked increase in acetylcholine, and it's not limited to just the neuromuscular junction and that it will have effects elsewhere, including the AV node via vagal nerve stimulation, which can result in bradycardia and sometimes syncope. Let's compare the presentation of myasthenia patients to that of the most common distracting diagnosis on our differential, Lambert-Eaton syndrome. In Lambert-Eaton syndrome, patients will similarly present with weakness with one key difference. The weakness improves as the day progresses. The disease is characterized by antibodies against the presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels. With more recruitment of the muscle group in question, more calcium is released to outcompete the calcium channels and the symptoms improve. As I mentioned before, the muscles of the eye are constantly working. As such, we would expect to not see ocular symptoms as much in Lambert-Eaton syndrome, but rather focus mostly on limb muscle weakness. Lambert-Eaton is also often a perineoplastic disorder, so look for underlying cancer, such as lung cancer, in these patients. Going back to myasthenia, lab tests will often focus on antibodies. The classic antibody is the anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody, which is positive in about 80% of these patients. In the seronegative patients, with high pretest probability for myasthenia, The next most common antibody, and the one that is increasingly being tested on the boards, is anti-muscle-specific kinase, or anti-musk antibody. The imaging test that is most important to know for myasthenia gravis is chest imaging, either chest x-ray, or better yet a CT, to look for thymoma. Do not forget to check for a thymoma in your myasthenia patients, as resection of the thymoma very often leads to cure. Taken all together, an illness script for myasthenia could read, A 30-year-old woman with diplopia and proximal muscle weakness with finding of ptosis, which worsens with maintained upward gaze and improves following application 
of an ice pack for 60 seconds with positive anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody on labs and CT chest consistent with thymoma. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment with suggestions for future videos. Until next time!